In Revit, you can enhance the accuracy of your performance analysis by using Revit spaces rather than Revit rooms to export your energy model. When you export your model using Revit rooms, a single set of assumptions based on the building type is applied to all of the rooms in the building. You can use Revit spaces to precisely describe the type or use, the occupancy schedule, and the energy use profile of each individual space in the model. Creating and using spaces gives you a more accurate model of the occupant, heating and cooling loads, as well as the power usage for the building. Let's start by opening the Revit project we'll use for this analysis. Open the building model, Simple L Building with Rooms Revit model. Next, let's review the energy settings to see what the export category is set to. Go to the Analyze tab and open the energy settings. Open the Advanced Energy Settings by clicking Edit, and then in the Advanced Energy Settings dialog, verify the export category in the Room Space Data section. Note that the default energy export category is set to Export Rooms. Parenthetically, we are not changing it to Spaces till a later step. Click OK twice to close the Energy Settings dialog. Now, let's generate insight for the room-based model. Click the Analyze tab and click Generate. Now we're ready to create some spaces in our model. Open a floor plan view, for example, Level 1. Note the room tags indicating that Revit rooms have been created in each of the enclosed spaces. Next, open the View tab and open the Visibility Graphics tool, then switch to Annotation Categories and uncheck the room tags to hide them. Click the Analyze tab and open the Space tool from the Spaces and Zones panel. Next, we'll add a space tag if one isn't already loaded into the project. If prompted that no space tags are loaded in the project, click Yes to load one now. Navigate to the Annotations, then the Mechanical folder in your Revit library, select Space Tag, and then click Open. Now we're ready to place spaces on one level of our model. In the Option bar or Properties palette, Specify the parameters for the spaces that will be created, such as the upper limit and the offset for the spaces. A good practice is to set the offset to match your floor to floor height, for this model, 15 feet. You can modify these parameters at a later time by selecting a space with a modify tool, then editing these constraints in the properties palette. Hover the cursor over an enclosed region in the drawing area, then click to place a space. Double click on the word space in the space tag, then enter a name that will make it easy to identify the space. Repeat these steps to create spaces for all of the enclosed regions on level 1. If you want to create a space in an area that is only partially bounded or unbounded, you can use the space separator on the Spaces and Zones panel from the Analyze tab to create space separation lines that separate one area into many areas. Spaces that you create with separation lines create areas that become fully bounded. Let's place spaces on the other levels of the model. Start by opening another floor plan view, for example, Level 2, then turn off the visibility graphics of the room tags. Next, let's open the Analyze tab and open the Space tool. Again, specify the parameters for the spaces that will be created, such as the upper limit and the offset in the Options bar. But this time, rather than placing spaces individually, click the Place Spaces Automatically button in the Modify Place Space tab. Change the names of the spaces created on this level. And finally, repeat these steps for each of the levels in your model.
After all the spaces have been created, create a new schedule displaying all the spaces to easily edit their properties. Open the View tab, then open the Schedules pull-down menu and choose Schedule Quantities. Select Spaces as the Category 2 schedule, then click OK. Then add these parameters to the schedule fields. Choose the Name parameter, the Space Type parameter, the Area parameter, the Number of People, and finally choose the Condition Type. Click OK to create the schedule view. Now that we've created a schedule, we can use the schedule to edit the parameters for each space and choose the space type easily. Open the Space Schedule view if it isn't already open. Then click the Action button at the right end of the Space Type cell in each row of the schedule. Select the space type that most accurately reflects the use of the space. Note that as you change space types, the assumptions about the occupancy load and schedule, the lighting load and schedule, and the power load and schedule for that space are applied to the space. Click OK to close the Space Type Settings dialog, then repeat these steps to assign the space type for every space in the schedule. After assigning all the spaces, we're ready to set the export category to use the spaces. Open the Advanced Energy Settings by clicking Edit. In the Advanced Energy Settings dialog, for Export Category, select Spaces from the drop-down list of the Room Spaces section. Click OK to apply these energy settings. Before sending this model to InSight, It'll be helpful to save the model under a new name so the model will appear as a separate model in the Insight interface. Click the Revit application icon, then select Save As to save the project as Building Model, Simple L Building, with Spaces. Now we're ready to generate Insight for the space based model and access the results. Click the Analyze tab and click Generate to send your model to the cloud for analysis. When the Insight analysis is complete, you can click Optimize to access the results in the Insight interface. Let's set some baseline assumptions for these models in Insight and save those assumptions as a baseline scenario. Set a range or value for each of the following factors. For the operating schedule, choose 12.6. For lighting efficiency, choose 0.7 to 0.3 watts per square foot. And for the plug load efficiency, choose 0.6 watts per square foot. After changing these factors, select the Add Scenario button at the top right of the Model Viewer. Then click the Action button, the three dots to the right of the untitled scenario name, and choose Rename from the pop-up menu to change the name of this scenario. Set the name of this scenario to Baseline Scenario. Now we're ready to create a new insight to compare the space-based versus the room-based models. Click back to Insight, and then click Insights. Click Create Insight and select the submitted room-based and space-based models for comparison. Then click Done. Click the Action button, the three dots to the right side of the tile, and choose Rename from the pop-up menu to change the name of this insight. Set the name for this insight to Spaces versus Rooms. Finally, open the insight by selecting the tile. Now we're ready to use scenarios to apply shared assumptions within an insight. 
In the Model Comparison dashboard, select Baseline from the Scenarios drop-down menu to apply the same assumptions to all the energy models in this insight. When you create a new insight, the preferences may default back to metric and annual cost. Be sure to reset the preferences to match the way you are viewing and comparing the data. Note that improving the accuracy of your model by using spaces will not necessarily reduce the EUI mean. Even if the EUI mean is higher when computed with spaces than when computed with rooms, it is important to keep in mind that this is a more accurate reflection of how the building will be used and a better prediction of the true building performance.